We've all heard of the late cocaine trafficker Pablo Escobar, who used to be the most famous and influential person from Medellin, Colombia, maybe the only person most of us had ever heard of from Medellin. Now the most famous and influential person from Medellin is Sergio Fajardo, who was, for most of his career, a math professor with a PhD, as it happens, from the University of Wisconsin, who, out of the blue, was elected mayor of Medellin in 2003 and rather miraculously transformed that city during his single term in office. We're going to talk uh, about their various issues individually and, and, and try to connect some of their experiences. First, just so we're on the same page and, and you have the correct background, we're going to bring you up to speed with a brief presentation from each. First, Sergio Fajardo. Good afternoon, it's a pleasure for me to be here. I have very few minutes to tell you about Medellin. I asked for this time so that I can put in context my city, my country, my state, and so that you will see why things have happened and how they are going to continue happening. So first, a little bit of geography. Well, I don't know why it came all the, this is Medellin. And, and I have to add that it's the most beautiful city in the world. <laughs> Bogota comes second, slightly ahead of New York. <laughs> and that's my city. Two and a half million people, a mile high. And I'm going to tell you, well, I cannot stop saying that what I'm going to say. My father is an architect. Maybe you don't like the buildings there, but I love my father and the buildings are beautiful to me. Several of those buildings were designed by my father. I'm a mathematician. This I'm not going to explain the way I would like to do it, but it's, I can synthesize it in the following way. I come from a non-standard path. We built a civic movement in Medellin of people who were tired of politics, who wanted to be part of society, who wanted to contribute to the well-being of our society, but we couldn't because we didn't belong to any political party and we decided to create a civic movement decided that we will get into politics, something that we have never dreamed of. We knew that we were going to get into power, and we got into power. But things doesn't happen coming out of the blue. All what I'm going to say about Medellin today has a root, and it, it began 11 years and a half ago. That's when we decided to take part in politics. And something very simple, but very crucial. Because usually at the end you see buildings and things like that, and you ask how, how did you get the money for this? But the real secret here is how we began, how we did politics, because the way you get into power will decide what you are going to do in, the power, in power and how you are going to run the city. We had a dream. We knew what that dream is, was. We knew that we wanted to carry out that dream, and we got into power. I don't have time to tell you the whole story, but I always want to remind people this has a beginning, and it has to do with politics and a group of people who decided that they were going to change the city. Now, I am a mathematician, and I like to frame things the way we mathematicians work. And we solve problems. The first step in order to solve a problem is recognize that you have the problem. State it. A statement like that is a political statement. So we have three problems to solve. Inequality, violence, and corruption. Three problems. Once you have stated the problem, we have to understand it perfectly well before we get into solving the problem. Simply. So what I'm going to do now is, as a professor, explain the problem. Here's my city, that's Medellin. Something very simple I want to add. We, the way we did politics was walking. Today I cannot walk as fast as I used to because I ride bicycles, I love them. I fell from my bicycle a year ago and I broke my hip and I'm still paying for it. But we walk through this, the city, the whole city. That has some colors I'm not going to explain now but I can say it this way. We put the city, our city, my city, Medellin, in our skin. We went throughout all the corners of the city. We smelled it, we saw people's eyes. We walked, we felt, we breathed in our city. So we had it in our skin. Then we loved it as much as you can love. We had it in our heart. 
And then we had it in our brain. We studied it very carefully. Skin, heart, and brain. That was the key for us. We walked throughout the whole, I walked throughout the whole city. And you have to do it. Then, here's a very well, simple way of explaining the problem. We think we have two trees there. One is the inequality tree. The other one is the violence tree. And you have some grass. That's my painting, I'm sorry. <laughs> but I liked it. And that grass has a meaning. That's corruption. Think of the grass as a nutrient that makes that those trees grow faster. Our problem, what we want to do is pull out those trees. Not just cut them down, pull them out with the roots. So before you start pulling them out, we have to understand how the roots are. And if we take a close look, of course this is an example, it's an ad, just a way, an intuitive way of explaining what we did. You take a look at the roots and you are going to understand something. It says there 30 years. In Colombia, in my country, exploded a bomb 30 years ago, roughly speaking, narcotraffic. And that bomb had the center, the epicenter, in Medellin. So we are going to think of that problem for 30 years. And think of those two trees that began 30 years ago, that they were little, and they began growing. And after a few years, of course, they have grown up very high, very big. The roots had been going downwards. But as you know how roots are, those roots have been going in that direction, and little by little they have got it together, and after 30 years, we have that those three at the end are the same tree, just one tree. From outside they look like two, but they are really just one single tree because the root is the same for the two of them. There is no way you can disentangle those roots. They are there, and we have to work on that problem, solving it simultaneously. And we have to cut that grass because that's a nutrient. We cut the grass, the way we got it to power, the way we did policy, the, the, we handled the administration, but we had to take care of those two trees. Now that you understood what we are going to have, we'll do, let me explain you one more thing. You have heard about narco-traffic. You mentioned the name of a guy that I never mentioned. It ne never comes through my lips, that name. Never. And, so whenever we take a look, you have heard of my city, that's why I wanted to talk before we could get into details with my colleagues. When you hear about Medellin, you know immediately you think violence, drugs. Now, whenever something happens inside that world, that's a door, that is an entrance door, I don't know how to point with this thing, but where it says why, that's the entrance door. Inside that, you get into a room that is the legal world, illegal world. There you have guerrillas, paramilitary, narcotraffic delinquents of all sorts. So I always ask a question. Usually you know that name, but whenever something happens inside that world, it happens very often, then I ask myself, why is this guy in there? Why was he there? How did he get in there? Usually you will, you will appear in the newspaper if a very famous narcotraffic is captured. But you will never ask the question, why that guy became a narco-trafficker? We have to close that door. It, that's crucial. Think of a kid sitting in on a, his neighborhood, in the corner, looking in front, and what he's seeing is this big door that leads through that world. We have to close that door. We cannot do it from one day to another. But what we have to do is we keep narrowing it, making sure that it's narrower and narrower and narrower so that fewer people would come inside and it would be more difficult to get in there. But how do we close this door? Opening up other doors, building opportunities, so that the kid that is sitting here sees that in front, but immediately he can see another door there. That's crucial to understanding what we did. So, that we did, I'm only going to explain, explain that as using a magnifying glass to take it inside that room. I'll pass over it and we get to what we did. One of the things that we did in order to narrow that door. We built a program that is called Medellin, the most educated. And it's bring all the opportunities into our city, to our people, so that we will fight violence, inequality, and corruption. And that these kids would have opportunities in life. So the package was compounded, or is compounded by, first, politics. We, our richness, our political richness is trust. We built trust. We didn't buy boats, we didn't buy leaders, we didn't have a machinery, but we had the people that we met through the streets. 
So we had the trust, and once we got into government, we had transparency. Everywhere in Medellin, there was a, all the signs that we had, they said, here are your taxes in Medellin, the most educated. We didn't steal a single peso. And that helps quite a lot here in Medellin and all over the world. Then we had citizen participation. We have to get people into action. We had a program which is called Social Urbanism, which is very remarkable. It's extraordinary what we did there, and it's happening there. Is, we're very proud of it. A way of transforming the city by means of architecture as a political project. We know a couple of things that we did. First, we, what's the problem with violence? The power of violent people is fear. You know that very well here. It's fear. The richest people build tallest uh, walls, a bigger, a bigger army to protect them. But the poorest, they are there, out there. We knew that we had to get together once again because fear divides us in, into pieces, destroys social capital. So we have to get together. So we have to be public space. But we have to be the public space that is helping us to close those doors, the door that I mentioned. So we brought into our city as a political project, not a reading project, but a political project, the meaning of public space. How we do it there? How we can get together once again? How we can see each other? Because if you are afraid of going to a place, of course you, the relationship that you will have will be of fear. And we wanted to tra transform that, getting once again together with a simple, very but very powerful political concept. The most beautiful thing for the humblest people. We are going to stop this, which is very commonly known. If you are poor, whatever you get, you are winning because you have nothing. We decided that we are going to have the most extraordinary buildings that have ever been built, not only in Medellin, but in the world. And I'm going to show you an example to the dignity of people. You cannot measure dignity, but dignity is very powerful concept and po very powerful way in dealing with that social transformation in Medellin, we have done it. More things, opportunities, Medellin the most educated means education, public education, social, uh, science, technology, innovation, entrepreneurship, and culture. That's our package. Those are the doors that we are opening in there. That was our sign. And I'm going to give you an example, and with this I will finish. I'm going as fast like, as i ever done it. <laughs> Here. We are, Medellin is, as I said, a mile high. We have a river that goes through the valley, and we have very high up mountains up on each side of the valley. So this is at the very top of the valley, very high up, very poor neighborhood where we have had the poorest conditions and the most violent conditions in Medellin. Nobody would dare to go in there. In that place, we were going to do, we did, just, and this is just an example because this happened all over, we did a new place, as I mentioned to you. We are going to build a public space where we are going to get together. So it used to be like that, at the edge of the mountain. We bought those houses. It was quite a problem. We tore them down. That's easy. Then we began building. That's what we are building. And then we finish. That's a very famous park library <laughs> known as the Spain Park Library. All these little tents that you see with the green and yellow colors are little inter enterprises, mostly created by women with our program, with social program that we had, helping people to participate in there. As this wasn't a building that was finished, and we asked common people, poor people, come to see this beautiful building. They had been participating from day zero. And that building is a place where nothing has happened in there, no violent act has been there, and whoever gets into that building will never get into the violent world. Thank you very much.